Alrighty folks, it's Anasos. Welcome back for some more Minecraft. Look at me, I'm on the screen. That's pretty cool. Start screen. And we got some crazy dude over here. So uh, this start screen, every time you start it up or if you go into one of these and then hit cancel, uh, it puts up a different random mob. That's pretty cool. Uh, so we are in the Feed the Beast Departed pack. Version 1.0 was just released to the launcher last night. It is on the FTB launcher. Um, and we're ready to go. So I wanted to do a bit of a uh, getting started guide uh, or maybe getting started video guide uh, because as we'll see Ted can't type um, in game there is also a getting started guide by one of the wonderful beta testers who spent a whole bunch of time making this in-game book. You're going to check it out. I'm going to go to create creative mode because this is not a let's play. This is a showing you guys how to get going. I want to cover the mod list, I want to cover some of the basics, and I want to show you some of the different uh, areas and basically just show off kind of how to get going here. Alright, so uh, let me just, uh, of course there's a little bit a little bit of lag lo loading a new world or creating a new world. Uh, so like I said, you do start off now with, uh, should go to survival inventory, start off with a how not to die um, book. And if you right click this, there is a ton. Oh, well, it saved that I was already reading it from the other world, which is weird. Uh, anyway, there is a ton of good information in here. I would definitely suggest you read this. Um, maybe just create yourself a world and read through it. And then if uh, time has passed, especially on multiplayer, then, uh, you know, kind of get started over. Uh, it, it actually says right here in single player, when you read the book, time is going to pause. And we can see the sun right there not moving. So you can sit here and you can read this for as long as you want. It's going to give you a lot of great information, you know, how to get started to uh, go ahead and get yourself some armor, look for the Pam's Harvest Craft uh, stocks and whatnot to get some feet, uh, food going because uh, there is spice of life in this, so you will need multiple types of food, although it's not configured to be super hard. Um, th this Game, this mod pack is really about exploration and going and seeing all sorts of different dimensions and different mobs and conquering bosses. Um, so there's lots of stuff that wants to kill you, but it's also not a super hardcore extreme survival like I'm going to starve to death on the first night kind of pack. Um, so it's, it's an interesting mix. Uh, one thing I will point this out, don't go to Savannah Desert or Taiga because bad things there. Uh, will kill you and basically there are hunter mobs and you can't kill hunter mobs until you have a high enough hunter level and we'll get into that uh, later so there are two events that I, I did want to point out it probably says somewhere else in here the first one uh, but there's two events one is the blood hunt and on nights where it says there's a blood hunt um, these guys will come out and try to kill you they're all more difficult than normal mobs but uh, they also have higher rewards and give you some stuff that you really want the other event is the full moon and the first night of minecraft on a new world is always a full moon so that makes the first night a little bit interesting uh, here are some of the main new ores that uh, the main mod I guess I haven't said the name the main mod is called nevermind 2 or and or advent of ascension and we'll be looking at the mod list here in just a second uh, it adds to the overworld amethyst, jade, limonite, rosite, sapphire, and runium. So runium is basically ammunition for staff weapons, and limonite is w ammunition for guns. Uh, and you're going to find a lot of that stuff while you're digging. Okay, that's pretty much it I want to look at in the book itself. Definitely go through that in some good detail. Um, when you start up a new world and you're trying to learn because there's a lot of really great information in there uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was mining levels and to do that I think I will flip over oh yes okay so there's Thumbcraft actually let's go through the mod list before I start talking about specifics and details uh, so obviously we have Thumbcraft that's one of the Thumbcraft rituals there and I want to do, do a little bit of configuration here as well uh, because there are a few things that you're probably going to want to configure. Uh, okay, so let's go through the mod list. We have Advent of Ascension, 
and if I shift click that I get that there's 22 pages of stuff um, so there is a lot of stuff this is the main mod this adds I think currently it's like 18 new dimensions uh, tons of new monsters guns uh, tools great blades uh, swords and bows ev everything you could think of this thing adds just a million things to uh, to the mod to the uh, game yeah uh, let me just actually just one that I think is found uh, funny I've never actually found this in game but we'll go with the uh, the beat sound cannon so this thing actually is one of the gu one of the guns you can find and check this out it plays music as you use it sort of kind of anyway so that that's one of many 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 guns that you can find so uh, I definitely did want to spend just just a minute on Advent of Ascension because that is the main one it's got tons and tons and tons of stuff places to go things to do uh, so a lot of the mod pack is going to be focused around that however we also have several other really good mods too of course uh, we have uh, Batania is of course one a lot of people know that's an excellent mod and you're gonna have to do some Batania to get um, some of the recipes some of the recipes have been tweaked and you're gonna need like mana diamonds instead of whatever a piece of coal or something <laughs> uh, so it's uh, it's definitely gonna want to do a little bit of Batania at least uh, Bobbles, Bibliocraft of course, Carpenter's Blocks there are a few kind of uh, uh, nice pretty building um, decorative there we go uh, mods in here and that being one of them chisel two there's another one so we can chisel blocks uh, deco craft more more pretty stuff uh, this one that I can't say and apparently there's two versions or something uh, and and Shirida, ra, 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 yeah and Chiridon there I'm gonna say it that way uh, gives us a really handy useful way of getting to books without carrying them around so I will show you that in just a minute actually let me do it now before I forget if you hit H then this GUI pops up and then if you go up here in the right corner and you hit library whoops once not twice you will have a list of all the books that you have access to so you don't have to make or find a Thaumonomicon or a Lexi Batania, Lexica Batania you can just click in here and bam you've got access to your Lexica Batania um, so that's really really useful and yeah, I was going to say, the one that's probably not in here, yep, is the Getting Started Guide. So uh, so you're going to want to keep a hold of this guy, the, the how, not to guy how Not to Die. All right, back to the mod list, because that's what we're doing. Uh, Ender Storage, Extra Tick, which is awesome. It was just updated. It now supports the Nevermind, uh, I'm sorry, Advent of Ascension stuff. And now you've got... Um, I don't know where it is in the list, but now you've got uh, like molten limonite and molten uh, rosite and stuff, so you can make weapons and t uh, uh, Tinker's construct weapons and, and tools and stuff out of the metals that uh, never mind too adds, which is cool. Uh, hardcore Ender expansion, so don't go to the end thinking it's going to be a cakewalk. It is not. This makes the End Dragon really tough to kill. And it adds a bunch more bosses and a bunch more stuff to the end. So that's awesome stuff. Uh, it's going to make it more late game stuff than, uh, than normal. Uh, so we do have Tom, uh, Tinker's Construct, of course, and Iguana's Tweaks. This means that when you create your tools, they're going to level up. And you're going to have kind of a progression chain. Uh, now this is set up to be not too difficult. Uh, but, you know, you, you can go from one to the next to the next. And you can end up with some pretty awesome tools, but these are not required. In this pack, you can do tinkers, but you don't have to. That's up to you. Uh, Iron Chest is always nice for storage. Java is great for storage. Minecraft, that's the best mod ever. It adds so much stuff. All right, whatever. Uh, open Blocks, which was, I think, originally added, actually, because we kind of wanted gravestones. But it turns out the gravestones aren't currently working. So... There's another one. Where is it? It's Cyano's Lootable Corpses. It must be down in the L's. Oh. Maybe that's fixed and Lootable Corpses is out. There was just an update last night, so we'll have to check that out. And I'll check that out. Come back in a minute. 
on that one. Uh, but that does give you access to a um, bunch of stuff, you know, builder's guides, uh, open blocks tanks, the glider, a uh, bunch of stuff. And check the recipes because some recipes, of course, have been changed. Uh, Pam's Harvest Craft, as I already mentioned, lots of different types of food you can make. And you're going to want some of those at least to deal with the Spice of Life, which is not in the list here either, but it is in the pack. Uh, Steve's Workshop is cool. Thumbcraft is another huge one. Oh, The Spice of Life. There it is. Uh, Thumbic Tinkerer that goes with Thumbcraft, of course. And um, Tinkers we've mentioned a few times. Witchery is huge. Z-Tones is another pretty building mod. Uh, mod. Uh, so you get lots of decorative blocks. And Translocator was added. And this is because this is basically the only way to move items and liquids around automatically. Uh, now these are sort of magic-y. And of course the whole pack is centered around magic and um, no, basically no uh, tech mods in here at all. So lots of exploration, lots of magic, lots of uh, finding other dimensions and, and going and killing bosses and stuff like that. But there are no pipes. There is very little automation. And uh, the difficulty is definitely higher than, than normal. Um, so that's the next part I wanted to cover is a couple of configuration tweaks I would suggest you guys make. Uh, first one is in the upper left one corner we have the journey map. And if we hit J we can get to all the millions of options for journey map. This thing's pretty huge. Um, Let's go to, oh my GUI is larger than normal so the buttons are uh, weird. So if you're on the extra large GUI it's going to be over here in the corner. I'm actually going to change that. Um, let's let's uh, set our GUI scale down whoop, from auto to large. And you do have control of brightness in here, no hardcore darkness. So if you want to make it brighter for recording or going into caves or whatever you can do that. Um, I haven't changed any settings yet. This is a brand new load of the new pack, so I just wanted to show you guys from the beginning. All right, now if I go into Journey Map, all my stuff is across the top instead of over on the side, whichever you prefer. Uh, I would recommend go into your mini map, turn off Show Animals because sometimes there are a million animals on the map and they cover up the fact that there are bad guys, and that's really tough uh, to deal with. Now, some people like this circular map. I personally hate it because, you see, I'm always facing north, but everything else moves as I spin around. And it's tough for me to figure out which way the bad things are and which way the good things are, or which way to get away. Uh, so this is personal preference, but I would suggest, again, go into your options and change this from... Here it is, right side. Well, depending on your GUI scale. Uh, from the shape circle to square, you can also do rectangle, but that's a little bit larger. And for me, I changed the font scale up to uh, size 2 and the compass font scale to size 2. So that's some basic tips on getting started there. Uh, now, I'm always, the, the map doesn't move, the mobs on the map don't move. I can just see my little reticle and which way I'm facing. So I can see there's bad stuff right there. So there's a, uh, I don't think he's called an ant, is he? A tree guy. Uh, tree spirit and uh, these guys basically take you and throw you up in the air really high and then you take fall damage if you fight them um, so you might notice it's still daytime and we have a tree spirit over here we have uh, these guys are chargers and these guys spawn in forests and plains and whatnot uh, and they make that chirping noise which is so annoying I call them cheeps because they kind of go cheap, cheap, cheap. And if you meet these guys early game, you're going to call them cheap too because they'll kill you. Uh, they are faster than you. They charge at you and you can't get away. So if you're going to be doing survival, which I presume you are, um, you're going to want to get yourself a wooden sword and either use like a tree. So if one's charging at you, kind of come around a corner so you can hit it while it goes past or something or just get hide from it somehow try not to get aggroed so that's the other part is plus and minus for journey map will zoom in and out and the default is I can see a lot of things but it's pretty tough to see what's immediately around me and how close I am so I would definitely suggest when you're starting out zoom in to a pretty close level like this 
and now keep an eye on that and you'll be able to see okay there's something up this way doesn't have an icon but at least I can see there's something bad over there uh, the Chiefs or uh, Chargers do have icons so uh, you can see a, a Charger is over there and this is basically about avoidance when you start out you're going to want to avoid everything you possibly can and uh, huh? oh is that a Hobgoblin talking to me? yeah careful of those guys sometimes those guys are aggressive and I haven't figured out exactly why uh, but early on you're going to want to avoid the uh, bad stuff as much as possible because they will kill you pretty quickly uh, so I think that's it so let's see we covered a little bit of configuration the journey map configuration is really uh, kind of critical early on I already mentioned the first night is always a full moon I don't remember yes the always uh, the first night is always a full moon in Minecraft and that means that there are some extra difficult mobs that will spawn uh, every full moon incl including the first night so you're going to want to uh, hole up and probably not fight stuff. Let's see, those guys are normal. Well, here's a good good bunch of mobs I can just show off real quick. Like I said, chargers will charge you. These are uh, goblins. Yes, goblins, and they have a little range staff that they'll shoot you with. They're pretty tough early on. Uh, these guys only come out at night. That's the night reapers. And they'll, uh, I think they give you blindness. Here's another guy. Here's a sasquatch. And he got shorter. He used to be three blocks tall, so he could hide under a tree and he wouldn't hurt you. Uh, but he shrunk, and now he can get under that tree with you. Um, oh, and here you go. That's the other one I was hoping to see. This is one of the first hunter mobs that you would fight. Uh, anybody can attack these guys. But other hunter mobs, and that's what this little symbol on the top means, the uh, red and green swords. This is a hunter mob, and you have to have a certain level in your hunter skill to uh, deal to be able to deal damage if you don't have any hunter levels it'll just say you, you need to mo know more about hunter hunting or something like that before you can hurt hunters um, other hunter mobs again you can anybody can damage these these are the ones you want to start out with to get your hunter levels up which reminds me of one more thing you need to do for configuration um, the C key when we logged in it should have said, yeah, hit the, in green there. Hit C to toggle your skills. Well, I'm hitting C and nothing happens. And that's because there are two mods with uh, bindings. And if you go to conflicting, we can see that toggle skills and crafting grid is both on C. Let's just rebind um, crafting grid. Actually, let's rebind toggle skills to something else. I think K is open. Yeah. So... I'll do that. Now if I hit K, because I rebound it, I get these skills on the upper right. Uh, there's a lot of stuff there. I am not going to go through all that in this video. Uh, but one of them there was the hunter mobs. I wanted to make you aware. In the plains and the forest, you're pretty much okay because the hunter mobs are low level and you can get started with them. There's some more that just popped up. Uh, again, more aggressive and more difficult mobs show up during the full moon. I shouldn't say more aggressive. Just more difficult mobs. I don't know what that noise is. Oh, there's a uh, scrub. Scrubby. These guys are really tough and they're only going to show up during the full moon and the other event which is the blood hunt. Alright, let's see. Our configuration's pretty good. We've talked about avoiding things early on. we talked about things spawning during the day as well as during the night. I think that's pretty good. Let's flip over to my other uh, save that I was just working on. And I just want to talk about um, mining levels for just a minute. This is uh, yeah my test world. I uh, just wanted to talk about mining levels for just a minute because this was changed kind of uh, last thing in the pack. So I've just set up a few ores here so we can take a quick look. And the idea is that Tinker's Construct, again, is an option. And it's probably a pretty good option because you can make some pretty amazing tools. But it's not required. So with... Um, a wooden pickaxe and, and all you can make your normal pickaxes so uh, I cheated these in but there are re normal recipes so uh, cobblestone and iron uh, normal vanilla recipes uh, we can get coal ore with a wooden pickaxe and we can get uh, well stone I don't have any stone out but yeah trust me you can get stone with a wooden pickaxe and then once you get your stone pickaxe now you can dig iron so that had to be tweaked a bit because Iguana Tweaks normally prevents you from getting this. Um, Iguana Tweaks typically, or is it 
ITT, Tinker's Tweaks. One of them typically makes it so that you have to build a smeltery before you can get any metals. Uh, but that has been uh, changed. So now you can get both coal and iron with a stone pickaxe. And then once you have your iron pickaxe, you can now get your normal lapis and redstone and diamonds and emeralds. Okay? Uh, well, and gold. So I didn't put these in order. I guess I should have done that. Um, the other thing, oh yeah, so Tinkers, just to show uh, real quickly, they do have the uh, different levels on them. So mining XP here is 0 of 226. That's a real basic flint pickaxe, and that's a cheated one in one. I don't know if you can even make a flint uh, tool rod, but whatever. point I wanted to show here is you may actually want to start out with a cheaper pickaxe. I mean, you have to, but uh, and level it up instead of going straight to a really high tier one. So this one's 226 for mining XP. This manual in one is 667 for mining XP. So that's like three times as much XP to level up the uh, manual in one. Now that's not a big deal here because the manual in one's going to be much faster. Let's see, mining speed 9 versus 5. Well, not a lot faster. Uh, but de definitely has higher durability and it's a much better pickaxe. But once you get up a few levels, that keeps increasing and uh, it's going to be uh, more and more and more XP to get each new level. So, uh, yeah, you might want to start with kind of a, a more basic pickaxe that's not super fast and super strong. And actually, I'm surprised Manulin's not a bit faster than that. But um, anyway, so that's pretty much it. Um, I did show some mobs in the other one. I think basically at this point, what you would want to do is hit your journey map. Um, well, basically, you would want to start off punching wood. Get yourself a wooden sword first thing because things are going to find you and you're going to want something to deal with them. Um, read your How Not to Die book because it's going to give you some really good tips too. And then hit your journey map and look for a plains. And here's a plains right here um, to my northeast. Let's just head over there. Because in the forests you can get uh, grunts which are really annoying. They're a melee mob but they teleport. So they can teleport to you, and they can teleport through walls. So if you make a little uh, uh, base or a little log cabin or whatever, they can teleport straight into it. Uh, they no longer spawn in the plains. So going to a plains biome is good. Um, Cyclops, Warclops, these guys are not too tough. Sasquatches are not too tough. I mean, everything's tough until you've got some armor on, but um, much better than some of the things that happen in the forest. The other thing is, is this magic? Um, that's taiga. So there are some bad things in taiga. I think grunts spawn there. Uh, here you go. Here's extreme hills. That's going to have some of the hot, kind of second level of uh, hunter mobs in it. Let's just head over there real quickly. Oh, you know what? Let me cheat in one more piece and suggest that you may want to make this pretty quickly uh, when you get into Batania because this guy is going to let you move faster. It's going to let you have an uphill step assist. And let's see, I need to get to my baubles. Here we go. Um, it's going to be a really useful item for avoiding bad things. But, uh, whoa. Oh, and I'm in survival. What? Oh, that's weird. It's, it's behaving differently than I expected. Anyway, let's get over here to these extreme hills real quickly. See if we can see a couple of the kind of second tier of... Um, hunter mobs that you might want to start dealing with. Uh, not only hunter mobs, but just some of the other mobs that drop realm stones. And if you read the book, you'll find out what realm stones are all about. Here we go. Uh, these guys, well, they are hunter mobs. They're kind of a second tier, I think. They might be first tier. Uh, magics, and they shoot rain stuff at you that explodes. Ah, perfect. Here's the other one. Golbies are both hunter mobs, which is the cross swords. And they're immune to guns. So the little bullet with the X on it says uh, immunity to guns. So some mobs are immune to melee, some are immune to guns, some are immune to um, uh, bows, etc. So you got to start learning and getting used to those uh, symbols. I think that's about it. Oh, here we go. Do we have some grunts here? Yep. 
So here's some grunts. I'm gonna go into creative and uh, basically get killed. <laughs> let's just uh, let's just show uh, how this works. Oh, and we, then we can see about the um, lootable corpses. So let's just make a waypoint right here. Uh, what is it? It's B to make a new waypoint. Bam. So when I die, I can teleport back real quickly, and we'll just check that out. Um, yeah. All right, grunt. Well, you know what? I'll fight him with I'll fight him with an iron pickaxe. That sounds amazing. Good. Oh, yep, yep. See him see him teleporting to me, little jerk? Oh, there you go, and I'm dead. So three hits, and we're gone. Yeah, so if you get those grunts, bad things happen. There was also a goblin on the side of the screen there that was shooting at me that wasn't helping anything. Uh, but, yeah, that wasn't the main issue. Let's see, waypoints. Oh, yeah, right, of course, death point. Uh, and teleport. Okay, yep, I didn't see it in the list, but we do have... Dr. Cyano's lootable bodies and you right click this and now I can loot all my stuff uh, anybody else can loot it too but I mean that's nothing different than a, a gravestone or, or no um, you can kill it oh that's funny it's like an entity I guess you can kill it let's get rid of the evidence that I died alright kill my little body go away good uh, anyway, so, yeah, anybody can loot that, I believe. It's not just you. But that's the same as anybody could break your gravestone, or if you had no gravestone mod, anybody could pick up the stuff off the ground. Uh, so this this is good. I like that. Uh, there's a lot of, probably going to be a lot of death early on. Oh, and this shows me one more configuration thing I wanted to show you. If you look at the mini-map, right now there's a death uh, marker. And if there are a whole bunch of waypoints nearby, or even just two or three, it can really cover up a lot of the mini-map. So I would highly recommend you guys go in and turn off Show Waypoint Labels. Um, if you want to see waypoint labels, go to your main map, and bam, you can see it here. But again, that's going to cover up the fact that there's red dots under there. And there's this guy, this guy, here, this guy is just around the corner and wants to kill you but you can't see it because there's a huge uh, mini-map label for my death point there I guess I didn't name that one that was silly alright guys I think that's about it just for like how to get started uh, go for the planes planes is good um, avoid as much as you can oh yeah look at that I'm, I'm walk single stepping up the uh, terrain now because I have that sojourner sash on which I would highly recommend you guys take a look into. It's a Batania uh, piece. But I think that's about it. Sneak peek, kind of, or not sneak peek, but getting started in Departed 1.0. Hope you guys enjoy the pack. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.